Hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Amanda, otherwise known as the Tangled Skins Crafter here on YouTube and all my other social media. Uh, today I wanted to do a little whip and review over these Dollar Tree diamond painting kits. Um, I've already done a couple to show you how the other two will turn out. This is obviously the tiger. And this cute little thing, just a little watering can with flowers. Let's see if I can get it in frame. Sorry for the glare. It's morning right now and the sun is coming in strong through that window. Let's set these aside for now. So first off, it's from Crafters Square, which is the, the brand I see a lot at the Dollar Tree. This is Diamond Painting Sheet. 6 by 8 inches or 15 by 20 centimeters. In the back it shows you how it looks. I think this is without the drills on it. So this is what the actual sheet will look like. It shows that it comes with the colors, the little tray, the pen, and the wax. Then it tells you diamond painting sheet, content, diamond painting sheet, sorting tray, rhinestones, silicone clay, diamond painting pen, and instruction sheet. Up. Set that to the side. All right, so here is the actual sheet you'll be working on. And I'm going to go through this like, um, like you've never seen diamond painting before, because I know some of the people, some of my friends that come on here, they don't do diamond painting, so. So these, let's see if I can get hold of it, are usually covered in a film that protects the stickiness. And it is pretty sticky, which means the rhinestones of the column should stick really well on it. Everything you need is included in the kit, because all you need is a diamond pin, a tray to put your drills in, and the wax, which is what helps you pick up the drills with the pen. And these are what we usually call drills. They call them rhinestones. These are the colors you're going to use on the diamond painting. They will be numbered. This one's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And if you'll look, there's numbers. I don't know if this will won't focus, but there's numbers that correspond with each color on the sheet. The instructions that comes with it will tell you how to do it. It says lay out the canvas on a clean surface. The symbols on the printed chart correspond with the labels on your diamonds. Choose a single color diamond to start with and pour a small amount of diamonds in the tray. I like how they're called rhinestones on the package, but diamonds in the instructions. Gently shake the tray and the diamonds will settle with the right side facing up, which makes it very easy to pick them up with the applicator. I wish that would work as well as it seems like it would, but sometimes I shake it and they still don't go right side up. So remember when you're diamond painting, the flat surface sticks to the page, to the canvas, to the board, whatever you're working on. And then the faceted side faces up and that's what makes it sparkle. Alright, it says peel back a small section of the protective film. Keep most of the canvas covered while you're working on it. I don't do that on little things like this. Now, bigger projects, I do do that. Um, pick up a diamond, carefully press it onto the corresponding symbol on the canvas sheet. Add wax if the applicator doesn't pick up the diamonds. That's it with the instructions. Let's open up this little kit. This is what I call a generic pen. I will be using this today so you can see that this is all you need to do it. The tray. And the wax. The wax comes a little square with a protective sheet on both sides. I just peel back part of it. I take it. I usually just hold it, but you can sit it down. And just kind of push it and wiggle it like you would a cookie cutter and cookie dough. 
then you have filled the tip of it with wax and that's what's going to allow you to pick up the drills. Now you just choose a collar. I'm going to start with number seven, the black. A pair of scissors. I don't know where my small ones are, so I'll use these big ones. My fabric scissors that are getting dull because I keep using them on everything else. And you just pour drills. I poured them all. You probably shouldn't do that, but that's how I'm going forward. Then you just shake and you try to get them to lay down with the shiny sides up, the faceted sides up. And I'm going to peel back the sheet. I would recommend if you've never done it before, don't take the whole sheet off because if you spill the drills, they're going to stick. Hopefully I don't do that now that I say that. But anyway, if you spill the drills, they're going to stick all over the canvas you're working on. So black was number seven. So I'm going to take the pin, just going to stick it to the top of one. Not hard. You don't press hard. And that will pick it up because it sticks to the wax in it. And then you just find the circle with the corresponding number in it. I'll start at the top. And you just sit it right down on top. You don't have to push hard and it adheres to the what's usually poured glue on the painting. And now I'm just going to work on this. Um, let's see, I don't know what to talk about as I work on this. Um, let me lay these back out. So I did these before because I knew I wouldn't want to spend, I don't know how long, to do three of these and try to find something to talk about. I guess I could have worked on them while recording and just did a little time lapse. But I find it very relaxing to work on these. And I usually cross stitch or knit, lately mostly cross stitch, counted and stamped. And uh, I found that these are more relaxing for me and they go faster so I get things completed a lot faster. Sorry, my nose is a little runny today. I'll try not to sniff too much. So for the tiger and the watering can with flowers, I think for what they are, for being a dollar twenty-five kits from the Dollar Tree, I really like them. They're easy to do. There's not too many colors. Um, they're partial drill. This is what we call a piece that isn't full coverage. And even in the partial part, the part that you're actually working on, it's still not completely covered. All the drills don't line up and touch each other through the whole picture, which I found fun because I do a lot of mostly full coverage and also found it kind of frustrating on the watering can because apparently I cannot line things up straight. But even though I'm slightly a perfectionist and it kind of bothers me sometimes if I don't get things just how they should be, I still found it a lot of fun and the differences in how everybody does things that's what makes them unique that's what makes it yours did you mess up a collar do you like it leave it because that makes it yours I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these once I'm done with them I might just then tack them up on my wall. I might put them in little frames. I might gift them to someone. I think I'm going to try to seal them because I'm always afraid the diamonds are going to fall off after, you know, 
they've been on there for a while. Oh, that is one thing that detracts for me for the on these is that I still give I think I'll give them a five out of five for what they are. But if you can see his eye. I really wish I'll, I'll try to insert a picture a clear picture here but his eye doesn't have a drill but it's sticky so eventually a lot of dust and dirt's going to stick to that and it's not going to be as pretty so what I'm going to do and there's little gaps where it was shaped and you know you couldn't put drills side by side and those are sticky but the rest of the picture is not sticky, so that's good. But I think I'm going to put a sealer on. I still haven't tried a sealer. I do have some sealer. And um, I just got mine from Tamu. just says di diamond painting sealer. And it comes with like a little brush to brush it on. I think I'm going to try sealing them to keep the stickiness from attracting dust. And then to uh, keep the drills from falling off for some reason if they get bumped around or... I don't know why a drill would fall off, but I'm always afraid the glue is just going to dry up and everything's going to fall off. I'm a warrior. Let's see. What should I talk about? A little bit about me, I guess. So, my name is Amanda. I am 47 years old. I have to do math in my head every time I come up with my age. Um... I have two kids, both grown. My daughter just turned 20 right after I turned, or right before I turned 47, same month. And my son is 28. Just turned 28 the same month I turned 47. Um, my son lives in New York. My daughter lives here in Texas with us. She's currently a college student. So she lives in the town where her college is. Well, city. It's huge. Um, she came home recently for Thanksgiving. That was nice. She's getting ready to go on semester break. We'll be spending a lot of time together, so hopefully I'll still be uploading daily like I am now. Um, I am a full-time student currently. Also, me and my daughter should get our bachelor's degree at the same time. I think it's kind of cool. She's going for animal science and I'm going for psychology. She's planning on having a career. I just wanted the degree. I have an associate's degree in accounting and I was going to go for a bachelor's in it, but I actually find accounting really boring and I've always been interested in psychology and sociology and all the ologies. So I thought, why not? My, uh, a union for my husband's work pays, well, it paid for my associates, whatever um, I didn't get financial aid for. And then I get a half price tuition at the school I'm going to currently for being part of the union. And right now the Pell Grant's paying the rest. So if I can go to school for free, and I've always wanted to get the degree. I figured, why not? When I'm not working, or when I'm not working, when I'm not in school, I usually work part-time as a substitute teacher, as well as some other part-time jobs. Um, I'm called a OCC monitor. I work as a NASA subcontractor, which sounds a lot fancier than it is. I basically just go in, sit, and stare at a monitor for 12 hours straight three days on, three days off, whenever there's like a research balloon going up, usually circling like Antarctica or something. And I just make sure it's still moving and write down some coordinates and stuff. And the rest of the time I just usually sit and knit or read or listen to audiobook, usually listen to audiobook. That's a to a job opportunity that doesn't come up often since they don't have research balloons up all the time plus there's several of us so they schedule whoever's available and go with seniority first 
and I'm the newest one. But it's a really nice job. It's really calm. I'm usually there by myself. Only see people certain times of the day. Um, what else? So my crafting, I like I diamond paint, I knit, I cross stitch, I'm learning to crochet. I like to draw, which there are some videos up from years ago on my channel of me doing some tutorials. No, I'm not doing the tutorials, I'm following tutorials and drawing things. Um, like I said, I'm learning to crochet. I've done some beadwork like keychains and stitch markers and I've made um, needle keeps and let's see, I can't think of anything else that I've made. I knit my first sweater this year. Usually I knit like shawls and throws and blankets, like big projects that take me a while. Right now, which I haven't actually touched it for months, but I'm working on a um, afghan for my mother-in-law. I did one of those Annie's Kit Club, and I have yarn that comes in every so often, and another installation of the pattern. And I'm doing just, uh, it's like random squares, like different stitch on each square. It's in neutral colors. I think she'll really like it once I get it done, but that's going to take a while because, like I said, I haven't even been touching it. Mostly I diamond paint and cross stitch right now. Um, if you've followed me at all on here or social media, then you'll see a lot of the projects I've been working on. Uh, this is still November. I've been working on the acrostic for November. Which was just uh, pick a project for each letter of the word given. And I'm almost finished with that. I'll be posting or recording and then posting an update video on that soon. How did I get into diamond painting? There's actually a tag. I should look up the diamond painting tag and answer that. I'm going to pause and look that up real quick and then come back. All right, I am back. So I found the tag. So if you don't know, a tag is just, it's a set of questions that a YouTuber will answer over whichever topic. And this will be diamond painting. And then you tag other people to answer the same questions. That's a very basic, simplistic, just, you know, explanation of what a tag is, in case you didn't know. Alright, question one. How many diamond paintings have you completed? Honest answer, I have no idea. And this is no, end of November 2023. I just got back into diamond painting recently. What, about a month, two months ago? But I did a few back in 2018. Um, I don't know if the tag asked how I got into it. How I got into it was I was a product reviewer on Amazon and I have a blog a day in the tangled skeins of my life where I used to review all kinds of products and um, companies would send them to me for free. I would put up honest reviews because I'm not going to lie just because I got something for free and a lot of people want you to and that's ridiculous. But um, And someone contacted me and was like, hey, would you like to review our diamond painting? I'm like, what is a diamond painting? At the time, you know, I, I did counted cross stitch and I did knitting and that's the only thing I did at the time and I love crafts. Anything I can sit and do and feel creative makes me happy and I find it relaxing. Anything I can do while listening to audiobooks makes me happy. So I was like, why not? these look interesting and at the time I you know never heard of them and I didn't see much about them and I got them and I think 
I think I might have reviewed a couple. I, I, I'd have to look back, but I know I did a couple, and some of them were kind of low quality. And, uh, of course, like I said, I think it was still pretty new back then, so they've gotten a lot better. But they just, they were okay. Um, I did like a little Christmas scene, I remember. I did like a pirate ship, ghost ship looking thing. I did a Tree of Life. I think that was my favorite. If I could ever find these. I don't have any pictures anywhere that I can find. And apparently I put them up. The actual pa diamond paintings up somewhere. Years ago. And I have no idea where. I've moved since then. Who knows where they could be. But um. And then I, I, I guess I just forgot about them. And I'm a hoarder. I'm not really a hoarder. I'm not like the TV show hoarder. But once I like something or get into something, I start buying more and more. And in this case, actually, it started out with more and more sellers saw that I had been reviewing them or leaving reviews on Amazon or reviewing them on my blog, which, whatever happened. And more and more sellers were se sending them to me. And then I just lost interest or maybe it's when I moved and I put them away and like I said just kind of forgot about them that was a very long answer to number one how many paintings have you completed because I don't know I know I did like at least three four maybe more back then because sometimes I'll forget until I come across something and be like oh yeah I did that if I go back on my Instagram feed like five years ago yeah, five years ago then maybe I could tell you for sure but you know that's a lot of scrolling and I feel like the numbers from back then is kind of unimportant <laughs> so currently I mean I've done the watering can and I've done the tiger to completion um, I did two Halloween pieces last month for Halloween 2023 uh, hashtag on YouTube so that's four I'm currently working on four is that correct yeah I got fall girl I've got dragon girl I've got Santa's snowman and I've got Christmas scene so I have four going right now in November two of them for the jingle drills 2023 challenge for the challenge, it's hard for me not to accept it if it's in a craft I enjoy. I mean, that's why I did my first sweater. Why, how I ended up knitting my first sweater this year was because of a hashtag challenge thing. It was like the bougie sweater sal or something. I'd have to look at my Instagram. But yeah, if there's any kind of challenge or hashtag, it makes me want to jump in and join. I have FOMO. Alright, number two. How many diamond paintings do you currently have in your stash? I have too many. From just, just looking over on my shelf. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have 9 not started on my shelf. And then I have a box of probably 10, 10 to 15 more. Oh, and then I have a little six pack I just got and reviewed. The review hasn't, or not reviewed, but unboxed that hasn't went up yet. So maybe 30? Between 20 and 30. Yeah, I don't think I have any more. I think I put, brought them all in here. When did you begin diamond painting? I answered that, 2018. Number four, if you could only purchase from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life, who would you purchase from and why? I, f I don't know how to answer that because right now I don't really know much about the diamond painting companies. I get all of mine from either Timu or there's um, a lot of sites like Coo Deals and and um, one day saving FG normal 
trying to remember the letters G B F K E or something like that. Um, that are sending me kits. I don't know which ones. I cannot remember which ones do diamond paintings and which are only cross stitch. But you know, I have a lot of companies that are sending me some to do, and then I buy or win the cheap ones off of Timu. I have not experienced any of the really nice expensive ones from like Diamond Arts Club or what is it Dream Designs or any of the other ones. I would like to. Right now I cannot afford it. Once I can afford it I would love to buy some from there and see what all the hype is about them. Other than the fact they actually you know license have licensed artwork which would you know I really do think you should support artists, but I also believe that if you can find some cheap kits, I mean, I, I feel like most of the stuff I do is not something that was licensed. It was just some kind, it was probably just some kind of either stock photo or what are they call the public artists that just, they get paid by the hour just to do quick generic artwork. Anyway. I feel like most of the stuff I do is that kind of kits. But I feel like everybody deserves to be able to do something that makes them happy. And if getting some cheap kits off of a site makes you happy, if it's not hurting anyone physically, then go for it. I know that's not a popular opinion. And I really do believe that artists should be supported. Don't take me wrong. But if you can find a way to perhaps make sure the stuff you're getting isn't stolen, then buy it. Do it. Enjoy it. I think a lot of stuff is not stolen artwork. Cause especially since, I mean, have you seen the quality of some of this stuff that they sell? It's still cute, but you can tell it's not something someone took time on. Alright, I will get off that subject before I get a lot of haters. This has turned out kind of cute so far, right? Can you see how sparkly? And that's just the black on it. Alright, continuing on. Number five, when diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, etc. This changes depending on my mood. I'm a mood crafter and I'm a mood listener. So often I will turn on a YouTube channel, either diamond painting or cross stitch, sometimes knitting. Um, trying to remember I will probably tag some people below but I think it's Marianne's is it Marianne it's creative space Amanda's crafty corner Stitcherella Nora Knits I will not sing her theme song but it's in my head all the time I go through the house just singing this lady's theme song to her YouTube channel it's funny my husband just thinks I'm crazy um Wow, there's so many more people, but those are some of my go-to YouTube channels. Um, Nim's Crafts. Nim Crafts. I think I always add an extra S in there. Usually if I see that a new video is posted, I'll go watch it first. And then if I just don't want to watch anything, I'll listen to an audiobook. I do listen to some podcasts also, but mostly audiobooks and YouTube videos. Rare occasion I'll watch a movie. I mean, I love watching movies, but I like to actually sit and watch a movie and not be doing something where I'm looking down and missing most of it. So with, you know, YouTube channels, podcasts and stuff, I'm not missing a lot with the YouTube channels. I can glance up anytime they're showing something and the rest of the time just I'll be looking down while they chat. Um, 
What is your favorite category to diamond paint? Landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc. I don't know if I have an absolute favorite. Um, I mean, if you ask me what my favorite, like, kind of artwork is, a lot of time it is fantasy or anime inspired or horror, like something dark. But to diamond paint, I like to do a bunch of different things. Lately, I've been drawn to people um, for diamond painting and cross stitch. Like I have the woman reading cross stitch I'm working on. I have the shopping witch cross stitch. I have fall girl diamond painting. Santa snowman. Of course, I love anything Christmas. I'm not big into landscapes, but I find some of the like fantastical ones, the fantasy, like would not exist in the real world one landscapes. Those I like, and I might do some of those, but I have very eclectic taste in many things and diamond painting. Just there's so many choices out there. Why? stick to just your favorite because you might find new favorites. I'm a rambler talker too in case you haven't noticed. Um, I'm sorry I thumbed so much. Number seven. What is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from? That there isn't an artist I have completed the most diamond paintings from yet. If I could I would buy all the Randall Spangler. I think it's how you say it artwork from like Diamond Arts Club and I'm sure he's probably licensed other places because I love his artwork I haven't got to do any of it yet because you know like I said I try not to buy stuff that I know is that should be licensed but isn't um, I'll eventually do some cross stitch because I feel like you know the cross stitch usually has more detail and it's probably easier to frame than diamond paintings, but I will eventually do some of my favorite ones of his and cross stitch from like Heaven and Earth Designs or something. Uh, I can't think of, it's, it's hard for me to remember names. I know there's a lot of artists I really like, but I actually have to go and look up like who did the bookshelves. Usually it's Heaven Earth Designs that I look because that's where I found a lot of them. So, you know, whenever that question gets brought up, I was like, I'm sorry, I have no idea. I can point to them and be like that person, the person who did that one. I like that artwork, but remembering the name is really hard for me. I barely remember my own name some days. Uh, eight, what is the artist you own the most diamond paintings from? Again, I don't I don't have, um, don't know that I have any diamond paintings from any specific artist. Nine, what is your go-to wax when diamond painting? I just use the stuff that comes with the kits. It's been working for me so far. I've seen some kind of putty that people have used. It looks really sticky and stringy and I'm kind of worried to spend my money on something like that, especially when I have a huge bag of this little wax that comes with these because one square usually lasts me through several diamond paintings. I don't even know if I've actually used up a square yet, so I just keep collecting more and more. Number 10, what do you do with your finished diamond paintings? Do you hang them, put them in a portfolio, or something else? Honestly, right now, they just kind of rolled up and stuck on the shelf the ones where I know they are where they are wish the ones I've finished so far this year had not been great quality um, once I get some of the better quality ones done I would really like to frame them but they'll probably have to be put up for a while first I'm going to seal them and then uh, I know you roll them with the diamonds out so they don't pop off if you, you know roll it in on itself then it squishes them together I don't have words today 
to make some of them pop off. That I'm going to store them in tubes maybe until I can afford to have them properly framed because eventually I do want them on my wall. Smaller ones like this you could probably just get like a 8 by 10 frame or something maybe some mat boards and frame them yourself but the larger ones I'm going to have professionally framed. Some of the mid-size I don't even not mid-size but like the normal what 30 by 40 20 by 30s if I have those I might get one of those portfolios and keep those in those because eventually I'm going to have way too many to even think about framing and put on the walls and I don't really know anybody that would like like them as gifts unless I do something my daughter would like if I got some like Studio Ghibli ones or something, she would probably like those. Um, number 11. Do you like to open your kits right away or do you keep them sealed until you're ready to work on them? Um, I used to just keep them sealed, but I've seen some people open them, you know, like years later and they're missing things. So now I open them and most stuff I've been doing unboxing for on you know, here on YouTube, at least little shorts, but I like to unbox them and make sure everything is there. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be enough drills and things, but at least I'll know if all the drills are there, all the different colors are there, the toolkit's there, if the canvas is actually sticky, because it'd be horrible to get a canvas that they forgot to actually pour the glue on, and then years later, because it does take me years to get to some stuff, find out you know I'm missing stuff or it's not sticky and I can't do it which I know you can buy stuff I just recently learned that you can buy I guess like glue from I think Diamond Arts Club I know I mentioned that a lot but that's what I've been seeing a lot lately and uh, you can buy glue and you can buy drills as long as you know the number you need you can buy drills to replace them too but I still would rather know now when I get the kits in then later when I'm getting ready to sit down and work on it and then I can't start it right away because that's frustrating um number 12 what is your number one unicorn kit that you currently do not own but hope to one day so to me a unicorn kit is one of those really rare hard to find kits and I don't know of any honestly so I guess my highest on my wish list would be a Randall Spangler. Any of his little dragons or his houses. Any of them. I'd be thrilled to get any of those licensed products. Either, either diamond painting or cross stitch. I would love to have some diamond paintings of his too. Of his work. Other than that, I don't, like I said, I don't know a lot of kits out that are available that are, you know, licensed because it'd be a licensed kit. It'd be something that the artist is getting paid for. That would be top of my list. And um, the bookshelves is it Amy Stewart. If they do the bookshelves in diamond painting, that'd be fun. Um, she has like a Cinderella scene that I really like also and then basically anything with dragons yeah I really I wish I knew more I wish I'd looked these up beforehand so I could have actual answers for y'all but I think part of the reason to do these tags is because you don't know what's coming up and you have to answer honestly Let's see, 13, what is the kit in your stash you are most looking forward to working on? I have a Lady in the Tramp that I'm looking forward to. I have a Rose in a Jar that I'm looking forward to working on. I have a little Timu kit that I'm looking forward to working on, but I don't know how she's going to turn out. She's like a white witch or white sorcerer or something. 
And I just hope she turns out halfway decent. Because she it was small with a lot fewer colors. But I'm looking forward to that one. Okay, I'm going to move on to number six. The, number, the color number six. I think one thing I don't like about these kits is that a lot of diamond painting kits you get, they will have a color code on them which matches like a DMC color code, which is DMC Floss for you non cross stitchers out there. And uh, if you have leftover drills, you can just usually they'll match other drills from other kits that you have left over and then you just collect them and have them for a later project but these don't have a color code on them so you have no idea how to store them I mean I know you can take time and see if they match any of the other ones with a nice bright light um, you'd be able to match them, color match them and store them with other ones but I'll probably end up just throwing them away or putting them all together in the baggie and use them for some random abstract piece or something. I see a lot of people doing that now. Alright, number six looks like it's the branch he's sitting on. I'll try getting him in frame. Where was I on the tag? Number 14 is do you prefer confetti, collar blocking, or a mix of both? I like a mix of both. Confetti, for you that don't know, is when there's like a bunch of colors mixed together. Like you'll have one or two of one color, and then maybe three or four of another, and then just one of another color all together in a little space. And I love that because it gives it depth. It gives it detail. Um... A lot of those, the farther away you stand, the more depth and detail it has. If you get really close, sometimes it just looks like a jumbled mess on bigger pieces. But I learned years ago doing Heaven and Earth Design cross stitch, which is highly detailed. I mean, one of them getting ready to start has like 200 and something colors in it. And it just, it makes it look really good. And I feel the same goes for diamond paintings. The more colors you can get, and the more little sections of confetti, the better the picture is going to turn out. But on the other hand, I also like to have some color blocking, which is just blocks of single color. Because those go by pretty fast and they're kind of mindless. So sometimes I can just get like in a zone, be listening to an audiobook or something. And just, it's like a zen kind of thing. It just, it's very calming. See, these would be considered color blocks just a block of color like if I was doing confetti I probably wouldn't be able to sit here and and chat with you well not chat with you because I'm not doing it live but chat to you because I mean I have to think and I cannot think and talk I've tried that before <laughs> I can't remember what video but I was like I kept stumbling on my words I think it was in one of my reviews but maybe what yeah, probably, well, I don't do hardly anything other than unboxings and book reviews. But it was one of those videos I just could not think and talk at the same time because my brain goes so fast that I'm thinking several sentences ahead of what I'm saying. Um, it just does not work out well. 15. How do you pick which piece you want to work on next? Well, for me, like I said, I'm a mood crafter, just like I'm a mood reader, mood listener, mood watcher. Um, so often I'll just be in the mood to do something different or def something specific. Like, um, like these, I was actually going to do these weeks ago. I bought them. And had been planning on doing this video, but I just, I'd never got in the mood to do it. I was like, I don't, I don't feel like I have anything to say. I don't feel like being on camera that long, which I'm, I know I'm, I'm not on camera, but I don't feel like recording that long. And then today I just woke up and I was like, you know what? It's a nice, bright, cold morning. <laughs> I know that has nothing to do with it, but it just, I was like, I'm in the mood 
to do something different. I'm in the mood to talk. So here I am. Um, other than that, other than moods, it's, like I said, if there's some kind of challenge or hashtag going around and I see it and it sparks my interest, I'll try to choose something to go along with that. Halloween and Christmas was easy because I knew I had kits that would were specific for the holidays, for the seasons. Um, also, like my fall girl, I have stuff that makes me think, you know, seasons. So once spring hits, I'll have something that's brighter in colors or floral or something that I'll be working on to go with the season. It's just willy-nilly. There's no rhyme or reason to how I choose things. Mm. 16. What is your favorite season holiday to diamond paint from? I've kind of answered that a little bit, but um, Christmas. I love anything Christmas related. I just love how cute and magical and peaceful most of the scenes are. Love Santa Claus. Love reindeer. Love Rudolph. Snowmen. I also grew up loving horror. I mean, from the time I started being able to read, I read like Dean Koontz and John Saul and Stephen King at way too young of an age. And my kids are the same way. I don't believe in censoring them or didn't. They're grown now, but when it came to like scary things and whatnot, I just, I was like, if that is something that you're okay with reading, read it. I don't think it affected me adversely and I don't think it affected them. I know my son was not into horror movies but he liked books he liked Stephen King once he started really becoming a reader um so Halloween is probably my second favorite depending I mean if I had some really cool diamond painting kits for Halloween it might even be my favorite because horror is one of the loves of my life I still love horror movies and books and uh gory is okay i like more subtle things but the classic i say classic but you know like the 80s is it 80s 90s or and before that I like texas chainsaw massacre and friday the 13th and halloween and my daughter's favorite, I think, is Scream. I would like to do, like, a ghost face one. So, yeah, Christmas and Halloween. As for actual seasons, probably fall and winter. I'm not a real floral gal, which spring always makes me think flowers. Summer, possibly. I love green trees and green grass and blue skies and breezes and if you gave me like a scene of a, a field with a huge tree and a a wooden swing from a branch and a girl with a flowy dress I would I would love to diamond paint or cross stitch that one but winter and fall will probably always be my favorite seasons for artwork Another long answer to a short question. Um, do you work on one kit at a time or have multiple whips at once? Whips, if people don't know, are work in progresses. And I have multiple. Um, partly because I get bored of doing the same thing over and over and over, day in and day out. Even though with diamond painting you're doing different sections, so usually different colors. But... I get the urge to do something new or to do something else. So I have so many whips going both in diamond painting and cross stitch. I have a lot more in cross stitch, honestly. They're easier to store away. And I've been doing cross stitch longer. Another reason I do multiple though is, you know, I've been doing this YouTube thing for you, like two people who actually watch me. And uh, I don't want to record and upload just the same thing every single day that'd be boring for both of us and if I only did the one thing 
then I also wouldn't be able to join in some of the challenges and stuff, which make me happy. And the reason I do this is that it makes me happy. The reason I upload it is because I hope to meet other people that do some of the same crafts as me because I don't know anybody in real life that does. I hope to get maybe conversations going or, you know, we can see what each other's doing and comment on each other's stuff or email each other. If you ever want to email me and show me what you're working on, please feel free to do so. Or email me, ask me questions. You don't have to comment on my YouTube channel. Even though that would help me with the algorithms. Um, let's see. Neutral, dark pieces or colorful pieces. Both. I love me a nice dark piece. I love grayscale also. Some of those are absolutely beautiful. But sometimes I want pops of color. Sometimes I want something so colorful it hurts my eyes to work on. Because sometimes it elevates my mood. Sometimes it just... It just, it makes me happy. Sometimes I find it annoying. And I'll go back to something dark. Again, mood. Very, I live by my moods. I craft by my moods. But yeah, I don't think I have a favorite over the neutral dark and the colorful, it's just both. Large pieces or snack size pieces. Again, both. Um, I think I honestly prefer the large pieces. I like something that takes me a while. But it's fun to have the snack size pieces just to have something completed here. You know, it's just that feeling you get when you finish a project. Sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. I have this issue where I'll get almost done with something and just stop. For a while. And just, it's like I dread finishing it because I don't like stuff to come to an end, I guess. But at the same time, it feels great to be like, hey, look, I did this. I finished this. It's all complete. So, yes, both large and snack size. Mm. Place diamonds with tweezers or a pin? Pin. I have tried with tweezers and I don't know if I just pick them up wrong or what I think I squeeze too hard but I flip them across the desk they bounce off the TV the monitors the wall I don't know where they go I have drills all over the place I use a little vacuum like the USB tabletop vacuum and I still find drills every day just laying around stuck to my mat squares or rounds. I mostly work with rounds, but I have some squares I'm going to start on soon. I got some custom ones that I unboxed recently that are both square. I feel like square gives it more depth, more detail. It just looks better to me, but it's also more difficult to place. I feel like it's harder because it's like more obvious when it doesn't line up. And I don't have one of those little straightener tools or I saw um, these little grids you could lay down and place the diamonds in and then when you peel it up they're all nice and neat and I'm like that's tempting even though it almost feels like cheating but for you know OCD folks I think that would probably be a really useful tool oops I missed a couple of the black ones Finish the brown ones first. That's the good thing about this. If you miss some, you just go back and, and place them. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you miss something. Which it usually isn't, but for these it's definitely not. Unless you ran out of drills. Then you just have to choose a color to replace them. What number? Number 22. What is your favorite method for placing a b drills honestly i didn't know there was a method for placing a b drills i've only worked on one kit so far that has a b drills and i'm loving it it's my fall girl but uh i just place them like i place anything else 
someone can tell me what methods are out there for placing AB drills. Maybe I could choose one. I did not realize there were methods. I know um, a lot of people don't use putty in their pins because it'll pull the the, the AB coating off of it. For, you, for those that don't know, I think AB stands for like Aurora Borealis. They're very like shiny and sparkly. And uh, they usually have that like when the light hits them, they have those all the different colors in them, like Aurora Borealis. And they're very pretty, and they just enhance the, the picture so much. But like I said, I didn't know there was different ways to place them. Unless they mean you just place them after. I place them the same as I do everything else. I don't know. Confused on that one. 23, what is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? Um, until recently, I didn't know that people sectioned off canvases. I would just pull back the, the top sheet and work on parts of it at a time. And then I started watching diamond painters on YouTube and realized that there's multiple ways to do it. Usually, I just take some washi tape and mark off squares or rectangles or I don't know I can't even do it straight so it comes out all kind of shapes but um and then I have this little ceramic tip pin it's just a little bitty ceramic blade it's not sharp I mean if you press hard enough it would be and you can cut the plastic with it without cutting through the canvas or anything that's why I don't use an exacto knife I'd probably cut all the way through the canvas but you can just cut in between the washi tape squares and peel back the plastic. I was trying to see if I had one nearby so I could show you what I was talking about, but I don't. And um, and I just work on the little section that I uncovered. And then recently I have some release papers I got and I was like, oh, these actually come in handy. So I take off the top cover and I um, replace it with the release papers. I don't really have one to show, but release papers are just, they're almost like a, a wax paper. And this is just a little piece that I cut off of another one I'm doing, but you can reuse them. You just stick them down, or you just cover up the different sections, and then you just peel it away. They don't stick. I mean, they stick, but they don't stick permanently. And uh, peel it away and work on the section you uncovered. Okay, let me get the next color out. Um, do you have any other craft, crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? I've already told you. Um, mostly cross stitch, knit. Um, I, I started knitting. I don't even know. 15 years ago, I hit 30 something. 30? 30, 30? 30, 32? And decided I was old and needed to take up old person's hobby, which is ridiculous now that I'm 47, almost 50, you know. But at the time, I just felt like I was anxious. And uh, I was a stay at home, wasn't working. I needed something to occupy myself. I'm doing those couple sevens I missed. That looks like there was three. One more. So if you shake your tray a little bit, usually you can get the the drills to pop right side up. Didn't always work, but it often works. Especially if you only have a few. I way overfilled my tray earlier. Um, cross stitch I started shortly after I started knitting I think I'd done it at some point when I was little I think one of my aunts maybe did it some kind of cross stitch or embroidery but it was so long ago that I didn't remember exactly what I'd done <laughs> and I come across a little cross stitch kit and I was like I think I want to try this and I did and I enjoyed it and I just carried on. 
Um, I didn't do any crafting for a few years. I'm doing number five now. Didn't do any crafting for years. Um, we moved houses and I put all my crafting stuff up, you know, boxed it up and just didn't get it back out. I mean, we end up getting a cat. I think I was knitting a little bit, but we got a cat and I didn't want to have, or a kitten. We didn't get a cat. We got a kitten, a little bitty kitten at the time. And I did not want my stuff out to where the kitten could tear it up because by, by this time, I'd become kind of a yarn snob and was getting expensive yarn for it when I could, when I could afford it. And, um, but then this time I worked also. So supported my, my yarny habits myself. But, you know, $20, $30 skeins of yarn to make a pair of socks, which I kind of find ridiculous now. But, I mean, you do and you spend money on what you love. And I love knitting. I loved making socks. I was a test knitter for, well, I did mostly for one designer. Dana Gervais, I think her name is. And uh, I love her sock patterns. I was test knitting a lot for her. And uh, like I said, we got a kitten and I did not want him around my expensive yarn. My daughter gets mad because I always joke about how my stuff costs more than the cat. She's like, you can't put a price on his life. I'm like, yeah, but I can put a price on this yarn and this yarn is worth a lot. If he got into one of my tubs of yarn, I would be really upset. I used to give him a thing of acrylic yarn just to play around with and then I realized he was trying to eat it and when you have to pull yarn out of a cat's mouth and realize that he's already swallowed like a foot of it yeah I stopped letting him play with yarn at all so everything got put up and I didn't craft for the longest time excuse me sir my cat is coming to check out what I am doing. It's like, speaking of cats, get off of it. He's technically my daughter's baby. I'm his grandma. He is all up in the camera. Excuse me. He's a black and white tuxedo cat. Who was always a mean cat and not cuddly until I started recording YouTube videos. He hears me talking, thinks I'm talking to someone else. And he's like, no, you have to only pay attention to me. Ugh, we're trying to get situated here. He's trying to curl up on me. He doesn't curl up in my lap. He likes to be across my arms and across my chest. I'm going to angle this this way. Oh, I spilled some of my drills this way so I can get to stuff a little bit easier until he loses interest in climbing all over me but yeah this cat did not like to be touched did not like to be petted you're on my microphone sir never purred I don't know if you can hear him but he's purring now and then suddenly like earlier this year I think it was he started like laying on me and I thought I was dying or something because have you heard the tales of like the cats they'll have at nursing homes and, and hospice cares and stuff and the cat will like lay on the bed or on the chest of the person who's getting ready to pass. So when this cat was laying on me every day, I was kind of freaked out. I'm like, I think there's something wrong with me. But I've been checked out. There's nothing wrong with me. I mean, I have a hernia, which I'm going to have surgery on. Which will be my third one. Other than that, I am healthy. I worry. Okay, this is off topic. All of this has been off topic. But I worry a lot because I had cancer a few years ago. And it was thyroid cancer. So in the world of cancer, it was an easy cancer. But I still, you know, you live with that fear that it's going to come back elsewhere and not be an easy one. So anytime I get sick or start feeling off I kind of start worrying a little bit and with this this cat this mean unfriendly uncuddly unpurring cat when he starts just laying on me all the time 
yeah, it was kind of freaky. But I think part of it's just that, you know, he's my daughter's cat, and then she went off to college and didn't take him, because he, like I said, he wasn't a friendly cat, so we were afraid how he would react to strangers in a strange place. Plus, he tears up furniture. He likes to sharpen his claws on the couch, no matter what you do, no matter what spray you use. So anyway, he stayed here with Grandma, and I think he was lonely. And when she moved, um, right before she moved, I picked out a kitten from a shelter because I was like, he's going to need company because he always slept with her every night, even though he was mean to her and would attack her. It was still her cat and he still slept with her every night. So I was like, he's going to be lonely because he can't come in my bedroom. My husband doesn't allow it. So we, I always joke that the other cat's her replacement for me and for the, her cat. But anyway, I think he learned from the kitten how to be gentler. And I think he learned from the kitten that getting attention from people isn't a bad thing because with I think with the other kitten being a shelter cat, he got used to a lot of attention from people and lots of pets. So whenever we brought him home, he wanted a lot of attention, a lot of pets. So this cat was just watching them, learning and now he's like, I want the attention. I want the affection. I want the pets. But it makes my daughter upset because he doesn't want it from her. He wants it from grandma. Now, I think it's because, one, I sit still for long periods of time. Cats tend to like calm people. And two, she's not around much anymore, so he's just gotten attached to me who feeds him and cleans his litter box and like I said I sit still she's she's young she moves about she's constantly active even when she's sitting watching TV she's usually on her phone and on her iPad and just moving around oops dead drop one there we go all right, so we have number five, six, and seven done so far. Oh, I missed some sixes. Can you see those? Those are all six. I'm trying to do everything one-handed now. The cat's laying on me. Put up the fives. Sometimes I think he also thinks I have treats or something when he hears the rattling, so he comes in to check that out, but mostly I think he just hears me talking, and he's like, who are you paying attention to that's not me? I'm sorry, I just realized that I never finished, I think, I think I had one more tag. Oh yeah, 25, who do you tag to do this video? Well, I will tag people in my description box. I think I will tag Amanda's Crafty Corner if she hasn't done this before. And who else does diamond painting? I'm trying to remember if Nim Crafts does diamond painting. I know she does cross stitch. Marion's Creative Corner. I have to check, see if that's actually her channel title I don't know how many people you're supposed to tag I'll tag three in the description box and hope that they will do this tag all right I've done the tag now I don't know what else to talk about um so these kits, let's get back to these kits. Like I said, they're $1.25 from the Dollar Tree. Um, if you don't have a Dollar Tree nearby, I'm not sure if these are sold anywhere else or online. I don't know why I poured that many out. But they're cute little crafts, and I think they're perfect for someone who maybe wants to try diamond painting but they don't want to spend you know anywhere 
some of these diamond painting kits cost up to $70 or more, I think, for the large ones. But, like, the smaller ones, like on Timu and stuff, I can get for, like, maybe $3. But still, if you don't want to invest, you know, money in a, a craft that you don't know if you'll like, then these would be great to start out with. See if you like it. Or if you have a child who's who you think would like this, these would make great little stocking stuffers or gifts under the tree if you do Christmas. I'm going to do number four now. Because um, they're pretty easy. They're pretty simple. Like, you know, you don't want a very small child doing this unattended because they are, you know, small drills that they could get choked on and they could eat the wax, which is probably non-toxic, but, you know, I don't think you're really supposed to eat it. But just for someone who's wanting to try out um, diamond painting, these are great little little kits. Plus, they're just cute. I mean, this toucan, he's kind of adorable. I like the tiger. It's not my favorite, of course, but I think my favorite of these three is the can with the flowers, just because it's it's different. I liked how it had the just the curving stripes of the drills, not full coverage. I'm not sure about the orange in these, why there's orange. Can you see? It's not as bright on the camera when I'm looking at it as it is in real life, but just these weird pops of orange in it. I don't hate it, but I don't understand why it's not another color of pink. I think another color of pink would have looked better. But I'm not the one who designed them. Maybe they knew what they were doing. Maybe people love that. I just find it kind of odd. The cat is just staring at me, watching me talk. Um... The tiger, I think, turned out pretty cute. I don't hate it. I think this is my favorite. No, he's probably one of my least favorite. I was going to say favorite in the colors, but it's still kind of... I feel like they could have done it slightly different. It's only like five colors or something. A couple oranges gray, white, and black. I have the packaging around here somewhere. Like I said, $1. twenty-five. Yeah, it would have been a dollar, but the, the price went up everywhere. But dollar twenty-five plus tax. Not a bad little investment for a cute little piece to work on. See if you like diamond painting or just have a little small you can finish pretty quick. Or, you know, a gift for someone or your child to work on. I bet it would help with hand-eye coordination. Um, might help with learning numbers. Because these, you know, they're numbered, so they have to put the right colors and the right numbers. Um... Maybe get their creative juices flowing a little bit. Maybe just let them do whatever color they want to. They don't have to follow the rules all the time. But yeah. I would I would recommend these. They're cute. They're fun. They're easy to do. For the most part, I like the colors that they chose. Like I said, the one with the flower, the orange and the flower is just kind of weird to me, but... Like I said, I don't hate it. So I guess that would be my, my review. Five star for what it is. You know, it's not five star like, oh my gosh, it's the greatest kit in the world. But it's five star in that it's $1.25. It comes with everything you need. It's not confusing to do. They have pretty clear instructions. And they're pretty cute. I kind of wish they had more than just the three. The three is all I've been seeing. I've looked. So yeah. Run out. See if you can find them at your local Dollar Tree. Get them for gifts. Get them for fun. 
I'm not sponsored, of course, in any way. These were stuff I bought with my own money. Just because I wanted to check out their little kits and see how how well thought out they were, how how well put together they were, and I think they they work. Um, if anybody would like to see me go other places and find more kids, I heard Target has a few kids. Let me know. If you've done these and liked them or hated them or whatever, let me know. Tell me in the comments. Email me. Be like, you know what? I give these a two star because they're too simplistic or because the glue for me didn't stick or because their wax was horrible. Just let me know what you think. So you can wax any refill. Tell me if you bought these for your child and you worked on them with your child. Good little fun bonding moment. They're um, probably inexpensive enough that a teacher could buy them for a class for arts and craft time because I know teachers usually have to buy a lot of the stuff themselves. Or as like a little reward, a little treat in the reward box if you have one of those. One of my fun childhood memories was, um, I know this is random, but going to the dentist every six months, you know, to get my teeth cleaned. My dentist had that reward box. Like after you were a good child and got it checked out and did the fluoride treatment, which I hated, he would let you choose something. And it was usually just some little toy, like you would get out of one of the little quarter, well, it used to be a quarter, little quarter machines. But it was such a little treat. I'd get so excited, and we always got like a new toothbrush and little thing of toothpaste. And like the only time in your life you will be happy to get a free one as a gift is, is when the dentist gives it to you. It's like, at least I got something out of this trip other than healthy teeth. Then when my children went, it was um, sugar-free gum and stickers is what they would get as rewards. I'm like, I think the toys were better. Maybe not as healthy as the sugar-free gum. But, yeah. That's me, my rambling, my TMI. Hope that didn't mess up. My monitor went off for a second. The cat was like, why? Why did everything go dark? Apparently I've been recording. Yep, I've been recording for over an hour this time. And that was after the little pause while I got up the tag. I am just talkative today. Let's see what else. Um... That is number four done. Still have a few more colors. I really don't know how people sit and talk the entire time when they do whips and chats. Or I would probably go live and do it. But I just ramble. I guess it's different if you actually have speak with people to speak to. Apparently I was trying to put those two words together. I can't tell you about my day because I literally woke up, got dressed, and came down here and started recording took my shot. I take Manjaro and I was supposed to take it yesterday and I forgot so I took it today. Okay, I'm going to work on number I want to work on one. Switch it up a little bit. Stop going in order. I don't know if I'm saying Manjaro right, but for those of you who don't know Manjaro is a medication it basically makes your body work the way it should when it comes to insulin. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I can't explain it well, but I'm insulin resistant. And I was pre-diabetic. I was literally 0.1% away from being considered diabetic. And my primary doctor and my endocrinologist was like, hey, maybe... We should put you on some kind of medicine since 
even if you diet and stuff, you don't actually lose weight. Because after I had the thyroid cancer, they took my thyroid out. And I gained a bunch of weight. No matter what I did, I could not eat. I could have been on a starvation diet and I still would have gained weight. Um, I was having to work out, walk three miles a day and, and work out constantly just to maintain. If I'd eat even halfway normal, then I would gain weight pack it on. I finally just gave up because why be miserable? Which I know it's defeatist and I shouldn't have gave up but it just after a while I was depressed all the time trying to lose weight and not been able to. Anyway after years of this <laughs> the doctor was like hey why don't we put her on Manjaro? That seems to be helping people both with their blood sugar problems and their weight. So I've been on it for three months now. Um, just finished three months, I think. I think this was either my 12th or 13th shot, and I take it weekly. And I have now lost 40 pounds. I thought that was insane. I'm like, what? How am I losing like five pounds a day? Like I was losing, or five pounds a day, five pounds a week. The first week, I, first few weeks, I lost five pounds a week. Uh, it slowed down, of course, and they just increased my dosage to the second level, which is five, whatever, milligrams. But uh, yeah. Apparently, if your body is doing what it's supposed to then you don't just pack on weight for no reason. Who would have thought? I felt guilty at first. I'm like, I'm losing all this weight and I'm not doing anything but sitting at my desk doing my homework or recording videos. But I realized, it took me a while, but I realized it's not that, you know, I'm losing weight for no reason. I'm losing weight because my body is finally working the way it's supposed to. I'm not having issues with my insulin. I'm not, I'm no longer pre-diabetic. My blood sugar levels or insulin, glucose levels is in normal range now. I'm healthier. Because of the shot, I'm losing weight, which is helping everything else too. My blood pressure, my headaches, my everything. My only problem on Manjaro is I'm not hungry. So I have to make myself eat because I need to stay healthy. And insurance don't cover it for a lot of people. And I'm waiting for that to happen. For me. It's going to be sad. Because apparently once you go off Manjaro, all the weight starts coming back on. Because your body's no longer working like it's supposed to. It starts packing on weight again. See, when you're insulin resistant. If I remember what I read correctly. Please let go, sir. My cat's got hold of my scissor fob. Um, it's not just insulin resistant either. I have malabsorption issues. Like my body's not absorbing minerals and vitamins and stuff the way it's supposed to. But anyway, I have to eat like 50% more calories than I require in order to have the energy. I'm doing number two now that I need. Because my body is either packing away everything, storing it instead of using it as energy. Or I'm not absorbing stuff. So I have both going on. I'm not absorbing what I need. And my body's packing away and storing stuff instead of using it. Wait. Yeah, I'm doing number two now. I was like, am I doing the wrong color? But it matches. This is one of the few kits where it actually matches. So yeah, that's a little TMI for now, or for today, is that my body don't work the way it's supposed to. I'm on medicine, which is making me lose weight because my body's working right. And if I go off the medicine, my body's not going to work right anymore. And I'm going to gain all the weight back. The best thing, though, has been I've felt better. Like, physically and mentally and emotionally. Because I live in like a brain fog half the time or I was living in a brain fog 
And part, apparently that's partly due to the insulin resistance. So I've been able to think clearer. I have more energy. My mood has been lighter. I have chronic depression. I think they call it a chronic depression with suicidal tendencies. I'm unmedicated. So if you ever hear me and I'm kind of low energy, it's probably just me being a little depressed. But don't worry about me. Because I handle it. I have been handling it for 27 years. I was diagnosed at 20. I was actually handling it before that without being diagnosed. So I'm one of those that, yeah, I have depression. No, you don't have to worry about me. Just know that sometimes I'm not going to be as upbeat, as talkative, I won't comment as much, but I'll still appreciate any comments I get. I will still watch everybody's videos. Let's see. Is there anything else you might want to know about me? Uh, told you about me, my jobs, my schooling. Right now, I'm writing a screenplay for a class I'm in. And it's depressing. I write dark stuff. I write happy stuff too. I wrote a child children's book when I was younger. I didn't get it published or anything. I got it edited and then never sent it in, but it's kind of fun and happy. But the screenplay I'm writing right now is just a short one for class. It's it's really depressing. <laughs> I'm getting ready to write the final act later today probably. Get it done, get it turned in, see what the teacher says. That's been, it's been an interesting class, learning about actually writing screenplays, writing scripts. People have suggested I do that since I'm not great with detail in stories. And I'm not great with connecting the beginning with the end. It's like I'm good with how something starts and I'm good with how I'm going to end it, but all the details and all the connecting events and in, in between. It's hard for me to come up with sometimes. Oh, and the cat's got the scissor fob again. All right, I'm going to do number three, which is the final collar. Um, I'm in a, I'm an online school. And how they do it is they do two classes at a time for eight weeks. So I still do four classes per semester. I'm doing number three now. and uh, But I do two at a time, eight weeks at a time. So this, this half of the semester I was doing modern U.S. history. Which I actually learned a lot in that I did not learn like through high school. And I am not going to lie, it's boring. I am not a history buff. It is difficult for me to slog my way through all the reading because, you know, since they're shorter classes, you do twice as much a week. So we go through two chapters a week, whereas you'd go through one chapter a week if you were doing the regular length classes. And it's just dry. I mean, I find some of the topics really interesting. We've been going through uh, the civil rights movements and stuff this week. And uh, the end of the Cold War, which I didn't even know why it was called the Cold War until this class. I mean, I might have learned that at some point when I was younger and just forgot, but it didn't even sound familiar. I feel like I've wondered off and on through my life why it was called the Cold War. <laughs> anyway... Like I said, I've learned about people that I hadn't heard of before. There's a woman named Sarah Keyes who apparently started the whole I'm not moving out of my seat thing before Rosa Parks, but I remember learning about Rosa Parks in school. Gosh, I hope I'm saying their names right. I'm horrible with names. Um, I have to write a research paper for this class and I'm 
writing it about white supremacists and how they pretty much ruin this country. <laughs> Hopefully you're not a white supremacist. Please don't hate me. But wow, there was some horrible things they did back in the back in the day, back in the what? Late 18, early 1900s. Plus, you know, throughout history and present day, there's some bad things. But like, there was an era of time that they had no problem just going out and killing people in the streets. So, yeah, that is a very brief summary of my research paper I'm writing. And I even find that boring. <laughs> not into history. The screenwriting has been a lot more interesting, but actually take has been taking a lot less time and brain power than the history class. Next semester I'm taking Spanish and speech and some psychology classes. I can't remember what the fourth class is because, you know, four classes a semester. Maybe two different psychology classes. I'm looking forward to those. I'm hoping I can ace the Spanish class with hardly any problem because I have studied Spanish before. I just never had the opportunity to speak it. So I lost most of what I learned. I took it in high school for two years and then um, I was self-studying it. When I was working, I was working at a prison. Mm, 2016 to 2020. And I mostly worked in visitation, so we had a lot of people from non-English speaking parts of the world coming to visit their sons. It was all mill prison. And it was just easier to speak in Spanish to some of the visitors, even though I wasn't very good at it because their English was so poor that they would misunderstand what they needed to know because there's very specific rules you have to follow when visiting a prison. So I started self-studying Spanish again, like Pimsleur and, and like Duolingo and um, I don't know, there was a online class I was taking, but reading it and speaking it are two different things. I could read it, I could halfway speak some of what I learned, and then understanding when it's spoken to me, I was lost. I'm like, I'd have to have them talk really slowly. The cat is staring at me again. Um... But again, that was, I stopped in like 2020, so three years ago, and I've already forgotten a lot of what I learned. I understand more than I did. I was also self-studying self Korean at the time. I know, two languages at once, but they say once you get the basics of one down, it's not as bad if you start another one. And like I said, my brain, I like to do multiple things. It's hard for me to just focus on one thing so I started on Korean after I'd done Spanish for a year or so and then after I'd worked on Korean for a bit I started to add in a little bit of French a little bit of Japanese can I speak any of those no I can say hello I can introduce myself that's about it My uh, dream was to be able to speak a bunch of languages, but I can barely speak English, which I was, you know, raised with. So I doubt I'm ever going to reach that dream. But does it matter? No. Do I enjoy studying different languages? Yes. So I'm actually looking back, looking forward to going back to studying Spanish. I'm going to do two semesters of Spanish. I think they just call it elementary Spanish, which hopefully involves some kind of speaking lessons, even though it's online. And uh, 
hopefully I can actually carry on a at least a basic conversation instead of just being able to introduce myself and saying I'm hot or cold or I feel great you know is that more TMI the cat's listening to every word I say. Sometimes I think he can actually understand and he judges me harshly. I don't know if you can hear him. He's making noises. He curls up like a baby in my arm and falls asleep. Kind of leaning back against my arm staring up at me. He really makes me think of a baby. You know how an infant like when you're feeding them and holding them, they like to stare up at your face. And that's how you bond with babies. Because they're like just memorizing your face and your features and studying your features. And they just, they love you so much. So they're just staring at you. I love babies. Anyway, this is what this cat seems to be doing. And I have no idea why, but he's been doing it a lot the last couple months. Like I said, if he knows I'm in here recording, a lot of times he'll run in here and get on my lap. Curl up in my arm and just watch me do my diamond painting. I can't cross stitch with him. He goes after the floss. But with the diamond painting, I can. Now he's got his head against my chest. Sometimes I think he just lays there and listens to my heartbeat. He's only three, so don't don't anybody comment that oh he's nearing his the end of his life or something. Because I've read you know that cats change their routine and and change how they act towards the end. But he's he's barely three years old, or is he almost four? I lose track of time. But either way, he's three, so I don't think we have to worry about that for a few years. I think he's just hit middle age or whatever he would be in cat years and finally settled down a little bit. Plus, like I said, I think he's learned some better behavior from his little brother that we adopted. Because he's a cuddly cat on his terms. Both of them, you know, on their own terms. I didn't even introduce you. The black and white one is Ollie. He's the one that I've been talking about and talking to. He's the one that stuck his head up in the camera a moment ago. We also have a brown and gray tabby called Willow. Another little share, personal share. When we got Willow, his name was Brenda. One, who names a cat Brenda? That's just, my mom's name was Brenda. I've known people named Brenda. I have a cousin named Brenda. It's not a the name that I have the issue with is the fact that it was a cat named Brenda and then after we got him home he started growing male bits and we're like he's not even a she I could have changed his name to Brendan or something but he didn't respond to it anyway I mean when we got home we're like that is not going to be the name he was still young so I figured he was still young enough to learn a new name so we named him Willow and then found out he was a he, and I'm like, Willow works for he too. Window is not a gender specific name or anything. I guess no name has to be. But most names, you know, a lot of names, they, they make you think certain genders. And Brenda is just for me more of a female gendered name. Willow is gender neutral to me because I've known female characters named Willow and male characters named Willow. And Willow just seems to suit our cat. He's not willowy anymore. He is a chunker. He's our little chonk cat. He eats a lot. Thinks he's starving all the time. We had to get automatic feeder because we used to let Ollie just free feed. But once we got Willow, he would eat all the time. And he got so big. They both weigh close to 13 pounds, I think. But Ollie is a bigger cat, like longer and taller, so he's still in a reasonable weight, like size. Willow is chubby. And he's got a lot of fur. They're both short hair, American short hair. But especially with the winter fur coming in, Willow's 
pretty furry and he's got that what they call it the primordial pouch he's got a low hanging one of those and the more weight he gains the lower it hangs it's funny willow is almost two now i think bad with birthdays just like i am with names I don't, I don't know if you'll ever meet Willow on camera because he is not a lap cat. He likes attention. He likes pets, but he likes, he likes to be moving. He likes to climb on you and give you headbutts and rub his face all over your face and then go off and do his own thing until later when he's hungry or right after he eats. He's very affectionate right after he eats. He wants to rub over your legs and climb on you and get all up in your face and knock everything on my desk around and then go off and do his own thing again. He used to sleep on me, but as he got older, he stopped. I don't know if it's because I could not sit for hours in one position. I sit still, but he liked to sit like up underneath my chin and you have to stay in a certain position for a full size cat to sleep under your chin. And in my office chair, that is not a comfortable position for me. So unless I'm stretched out on the couch watching TV or something, then Willow doesn't lay on me. He is not a curl up in my arm like a baby cat like Ollie is. Alright, I managed to talk through this whole thing. I'm surprised. I mean, I'm a talker, but coming up with subjects is hard for me. Especially when I try not to go in too much personal detail because I am an oversharer. But here is the finished piece. I think it's really cute. I'm not sure now, after I've done the toucan, which is my actual favorite. Because I like them for different reasons. Oops, I'm out of frame a little bit. Let me move my Merry Christmas bear. Yeah, the day after Thanksgiving, I started putting up Christmas decorations. But we have the tiger. We have the watering can with flowers. And we have the toucan. Which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Are you going to try any of these? Have you tried them? Are you going to buy them for gifts? If they're still available. I mean, last time I was at Dollar Tree, they were still available. I bought these actually a month or so ago. I can't remember. I'd have to look. I think I took the post down because nobody answered the poll on which to do on, on video. Please don't start biting me, cat. Ah, he's biting. Um, but I have finished it once again. The eye doesn't have any drills in it, but it is sticky. So, I will try to use the sealer. Let me know if you want me to tell you how the sealer worked out, or if you want me to show you how to use the sealer. Because, I mean, I could do a quick video showing you how to use the sealer. But there's also other videos I'm sure up that's probably better than mine. Other channels that could show you. Do they just have random little spots of blue on them, you think? And green? Apparently, I don't know what toucans look like. Look how sparkly that is. I love diamond paintings because of the sparkle. I feel like the flowers aren't as sparkly, but they're still sparkly. I feel like the black just really, really shines. Alrighty, so what'd you think? Do you like them? Did I explain how to diamond paint correctly? Do you think you'd be able to do it if you haven't done it before? Um, just let me know in the comments if you made it this far. Um, if you would, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel if you haven't, maybe share it with people you think would like it. Um, all of those would help me out tremendously in the algorithms. Plus, it just makes me happy to see the little likes pop up. 
I don't have a whole lot of views on my channel yet on my sh my videos, but I'm going to keep doing these because I enjoy them and I hope someone out there will find some worth in them or some enjoyment or some entertainment or some information. The cat's biting me again. Um, I'm going to end this for now. I thank you so much, especially if you actually made it this far. And um, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>